Okay, we're continuing our tutorial on the tools a photographer needs in Photoshop CS5. <clears throat> our next tool will, will be the crop tool and it's one of the more important tools for a photographer because almost any image that you have is going to need to be cropped to the right size. If you look up at the top, right now it's blank, but these are pretty important uh, uh, settings that you can, you can set to get the exact size. Right now it's blank and so you can just drag any way you want if, if you're just having a random crop or whatever. Um, one neat thing to note is that it's broken up into grids to emphasize the rule of thirds and so I won't go into the rule of thirds here but um, basically it means you want the third parts like this line here showing something important and this is her face and so it's going right in there and so that works pretty good um, but we don't really know what it is if I crop it you, you check this check mark up here and it's cropped so our size hasn't changed it's only been trimmed to remove stuff that we didn't necess necessarily need um, where it becomes powerful is in the tool presets you can set this up in this dialog right here new tool preset you would have to fill out these boxes first but when you do that you can have settings that you use all the time for example a 5x7 at 300 uh, pixels per inch so you select that and all of a sudden there you go you have your 5x7 ready to go and it maintains the proportions to 5x7 so you don't have any guessing to do and just raise it up and you can move it around by your arrows if you want and then save that we can go up to image, image size, and we can see we have a 5 by 7 at 300 ppi. Um, zoom in. Uh, so if we wanted to do anything different, we could even go, say, um, 8 by 10 if we wanted to crop there, and this thing's going to grow because we chose a bigger file size and when you have this if you wanted you could just go in here and save as a new tool preset um, again for whatever you want to do another feature is the front image it means it's going to take the dimensions of the original image if you wanted to maintain the the size and proportion but just wanted to make make it smaller uh, or you'll crop in but make the file the same size there you go so that's our crop tool the next is the eyedropper tool I don't use those a whole lot but you can use it the same thing here if you wanted to select a color it gives you the eyedropper tool and you can click on there and it show it picks up the color of whatever you select so I'm going to cancel that now uh, and the color sampling tool can also you can place it and it will maintain uh, the marker for the color that's going to be here as your as your you change your color settings this will show you where that is I don't use it a whole lot but it's something that's available okay let me get this back our next tool, uh, set of tools, are your healing tools. And these are some of the tools that I use all the time. Let me go to another picture <clears throat> with a, a guy that has a bit of acne. I can zoom in. And if I just brush it in here, you can see his blemishes just go right away. And this is uh, the spot healing tool it just does it automatically it senses um, it's and it's new actually in CS5 this content aware it used to 
take immediately or, or, or pixels from the immediate area and it wasn't always what you wanted to have but now with content aware Photoshop does something that just makes it so much more accurate that uh, it's just a lot easier to use the next tool on the list is the healing brush tool and with that what you need to do if we're dealing with skin for example is find an area that you want to sample from and click the alt key and then go into that area and click it now what we're going to do is we're going to cover up this area but it'll be sampling from right over here and so you can use that a lot and you can keep it aligned or not and right now I have it not aligned so every time I start new it's sampling from the original spot the next tool is the patch tool if you want to do it in big patches you can just select an area and then drag it to a good area that you want to sample from and it just takes that whole area and that is a a very effective tool and then the last in there is the red eye tool and this does it this isn't red eye but really when you select it if this was red you would just click on it and that thing's going to turn turn black and so it's extremely easy to use now we have our brush tools and let me zoom out I have my opacity set for 20 percent from another project and as you can see it's just a paintbrush but in the settings here you can see that it's set for zero percent hardness and so it's kind of a really scattered and it's a gradual uh, fade from painted to non-painted if you change the hardness it's that hardness that's going to just go away and you can have a, a solid circle and so that can be effective if you need um, high accuracy in smaller areas but most of the time you're going to find that uh, zero hardness is much more forgiving but then there's times I found that something in, in the middle works the best and last on this one well we'll go a couple more I guess the clone stamp the clone stamp is similar to what we did with the healing brush but it's taking it exactly for what it is so you sample let's say let's sample this eye you're holding the alt key and and then clicking there and let's paint a, an eyeball on his forehead so that's exactly what it does it's not real pretty but it takes the exact area that you sampled from and puts it somewhere else so we're not going to be taking eyeballs but sometimes it's handy for example let's say we wanted to extend you know this area right here up that's not the most attractive but you get the idea of what what it does let me start lower okay night see one of the problems I have right here is it looks like I have a hard edge on that let me change the edge see the hardness is high we're going to be a lot more forgiving if we change that to a zero hardness and come down here and go like that so we're just cloning that area that's what that the clone brush does it's not attractive and it's not even the best tool to use a lot it usually the healing brush is going to do things a lot better let me show you the difference in the healing brush the healing brush samples the area and kind of tries to blend it in more
So it's going to be much more forgiving. Let me do it one more time. But it still takes some work. And our last tool is the history brush. Now, we can always just go backwards here, but on this, let's say we didn't like that and we'd gone beyond our history states so that we didn't have the ability to go back, but you can always go back to the beginning. And this little marker right here in this box shows you the history state that you wanted to go back to. And we just paint this right back here and we painted in this information that was here in the original file and we could do the same thing if it was if it was here we just go in there and we've painted it back so that can be pretty easy to use